Hi, thanks for tuning in. Today, we're gonna to be unboxing and setting up a commercial printer. This is the CreateBot F430. Magically, it's out of the crate. Uh, that's definitely a two or a three person job. It's extremely well packed and it's very heavy. Uh, crate included, I think it's about 125 pounds and just shy of 100 without any of the packaging. So everything was protected by saran wrap. Um, so there's doors on the back pre-attached. The side doors are going to be bolted on afterwards. The front panel is obviously already there. And then all of the assembly materials are saran wrapped to the base of the printer here. And we'll pull them out through the front door. All right, real quick inside there attached to the glass bed is a carbon fiber sheet. It's just using binder clips to hold it on there. Um, I guess that's what they suggest you print on. I would suggest either putting kind of a sacrificial piece of glass on top of the glass bed um, just in case we're printing nylon or something and it really bonds to the glass and can even pull out a chunk or ruin it um, Or some other build surface maybe PEI or something similar uh, But inside there after I removed all the packaging we have all of our assembly materials and some test prints So this right here is a circle diamond square We can measure this to check that the printer is dimensionally accurate uh, And it gives you kind of an idea of what type of finish you're able to achieve um, don't use that as an indication of the best print quality out of the machine. Uh, masking tape, which we're not going to use. An example print, this is two mushrooms showing uh, PVA, it looks like, material. So it is a dual extruder. It's dual direct drive extruders. Um, and with two different nozzles, you can print different uh, soluble support material. Power cord, a standard USB stick. It's a Kingston 16 gig in this case. This printer, unlike many others, it uses a standard USB stick in the front beside the screen uh, where you can have your G-code on there instead of a micro SD card or full size SD. They also give you a spare fuse and a spare stepper driver. Um, not that I expect you to ever blow one, but in case, it's nice to have a spare on hand. And then a bunch of uh, bolts and uh, Allen keys for assembly. There's also the high temp nozzle, which comes not installed in the machine by default. This nozzle is, nozzle is capable of 420 degrees Celsius. That's a major selling point for, uh, for this printer. You can print very high temp materials like Ultem or Peak. Uh, the build chamber is also able to go up to 70 degrees Celsius. It is a heated build chamber and it's ductable. So you can actually ventilate this outside of your workspace um, if you're printing something that, you know, off gases or what have you. Glue stick, which we also won't use along with the masking tape. Scraper, all the wrenches you're going to need to assemble this, like full size wrenches. Um, they also come with a needle, little needle nose tweezers, um, which is kind of nice. This is a 3D printed duct shroud. So they're using a single 5015 blower in between the two hot ends, or the two extruders, sorry. Um, and this just splits the airflow from that to uh, both the nozzles. There's a spare uh, tensioning nut and screw uh, for the extruder assembly. A USB cable if you want to do direct print and assembly instructions and the user manual. So to get the rest of the packing materials out from underneath the bed, uh, and there's also a couple of spools of PLA under there, um, we're gonna have to move the bed up, which means decreasing the Z, so bringing the Z closer to zero or homing the Z. Um, but before we can do that, we have to remove the retaining clips that are on the X and the Y. This unit uses a BL touch for auto bed leveling, and one of the things it's going to do is it's going to move to the center of the bed and probe in the center of the bed when it's uh, checking the, the Z, um, min at zero. Um, so let's remove those clips. There are one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six of them, um, two on either side of the X uh, rail, and then uh, one on either side of uh, the hot end assembly. So 
with those retaining clips removed, I'm gonna turn on the printer and I'm just gonna home the Z. So we go to move axis and then on the left, Z home. The bed should contact the BL touch, which is in the center behind the two nozzles. All right, so now we can continue removing all of this foam. So these are the two acrylic panels for the sides. We're gonna bolt those on in a little bit. So here we have a kilo of filament. This is checkmarked PLA, it's 1.75. So that's one departure if you've seen our CreateBot DX video, which is using 2.85 or three millimeter filament. This is using your standard 1.75. And it looks like we have uh, blue and green. They've definitely taken a lot of precautions to make sure that none of this gets damaged or bent during its long, uh, long journey. So underneath all of this, there are cables here. Um, they are for the grounding strap. The JST connector is for the um, thermistor for the bed. And then these screw connectors are for the silicone heater that's on the bottom of the bed. Uh, we'll turn the printer off and then connect those. We'll start with the heated bed. There's no polarity to these two, so it doesn't matter how you connect them. Just make sure they're in all the way and tighten down the screw terminals. Give it a little tug, make sure it's in there. The JST is keyed, so it only goes in one direction. There we go. All right, there was no mention of it even in the manual, but this grounding strap here, uh, it needs to connect to some screw that goes through because all this is powder coated, that's not gonna work. Um, I don't want to use one of the bottom screws because I can't see what those are supporting. The electronics are underneath that panel. And this screw here, you can reach around the back and feel the other side of that screw. It's not holding anything, it's just holding this panel onto this panel. So I'm gonna use that. It's also low enough that when the bed comes down that the uh, this wire here is not gonna get caught up here. It's gonna be down here. All right, and the bed right now is all the way up. So this is as tight as this is ever going to be. And then it'll only be moving down from here. So that should be fine. So I'm gonna quickly peel the paper off these panels. These panels are for the sides. Um, this paper usually gives me a bit of difficulty pulling it off. So don't feel bad if you struggle too. So now we've got the paper off. These panels are just going to bolt on here. There's four screws. The screws were saran wrapped with the panels. Um, just connect those like that and we'll be back in a sec. So with the bed connected and the side panels on, I'm ready to test that things heat up. Before I do that though, I'm gonna install the fan shroud. So this fan shroud clicks onto the Sunon Maglev 12 volt 5015 cooling fan that's in between the two nozzles. To slide this in, I'm gonna have to lower the bed. So I'm going to go back to move axis and I'm gonna do it 100 millimeters and I'm going to say Z plus. That'll give me more than enough clearance and I can add this in. There's a little cutout here on the back of the fan shroud that goes facing the rear of the printer. Be very careful because there's very little clearance here between this shroud and these cables here for the heater cartridges and the thermistors on them. Um, so just make sure that you're not pinching those as you slide this in. There we go. And so that equally diverts the fan to uh, the sides of each of the nozzles. Make sure it's not hitting either of them or that's gonna melt in short order. Okay, so now we can test um, the auto bed leveling sequence. I'm going to go to move axis and home all, which is exactly what we did before. And then when it's done homing all the axes, we're gonna kick off an ABL. Um, it's going to do a grid of probing points across the bed, build out a topographical map. Um, if there's any kind of 
um, unlevelness to the bed or even if it was dished or anything like that, it would be able to compensate uh, as it moves around the bed by uh, adjusting the Z to take up that difference. So under settings, there's auto leveling in the bottom left corner. Hit enter on that. And then it says, please probe. So I'm going to hit probe. So it starts off again by doing the homing all axes and then it will do the, the grid. All right, so we've done the ABL sequence. We know that works. Um, we should probably test that the bed and the hot ends both heat up. So let's take a look closely at the screen. On the screen, this is the main menu. If we hit preheat, it will automatically preheat nozzle one. It's set to 210 is the preheat temperature by default, and it's preheating the bed to 45. The um, ambient temperature inside, the heated build chamber, uh, is not set to anything, it's just zero. Um, let's go back to status so we can see that. Uh, it's just set to zero and it's currently, the current temperatures of each of these is at the bottom, so 22.5 is ambient. Um, the heated bed is slowly getting up there. Um, nozzle two is just at ambient as well, 26, 28 degrees. It's gonna be a little bit warmer because of the ambient, uh, the radiant heat coming off of nozzle one. Um, other menus, while that's heating up, um, it's good to see that everything is heating up so we know we connected the, uh, the heated bed correctly. Um, so back on the main menu, I went to status to see the temperatures of everything. Um, we were in the move axis menu earlier where you can move the Z. You can change the increments that you're moving on the right hand side. It shows you your current coordinates or at least what it thinks the coordinates are. The reason I say what it thinks the coordinates are is when you turn the printer on, it's gonna think it's all at zero. And that's why we do an all home so that it can actually discover what zero is. Um, the timeout on the screen is a little bit annoying when you're trying to demonstrate this. Um, let's go back here. Um, so nothing else really to show you in there. You can home the individual axes over here and move the X and Y obviously there. Under filament, so this is where we can load or unload or extrude amounts of filament through, in this case, nozzle one. Um, unload is a good option to use when you are removing the filament to change it to a different color. Don't pull it out manually. This quickly pulls it out, uh, making sure that it yanks all the filament out of the nozzle itself so you don't end up with a, a clog or something. Um, so you can extrude and retract, as I said, and this is the increment in which you're extruding or retracting. We'll load the filament in just a couple minutes once it's up to temperature. Under settings, this is where we got into the auto leveling here. We entered that. Um, so it's got the fan speed for the heat sinks. That's 100%. Filter fan speed's 100%. The bed temperatures are also listed here. Um, when we go into auto leveling, so it knows that it's probed, so it doesn't ask us to run the probing. So we can probe it again by choosing probe. Auto leveling is currently on, which is nice. You can have a a visual indicator as to whether the auto leveling mesh has been loaded into memory. Um, and the Z offset is 1.6 millimeters. So what that Z offset is, is the delta between the height at which the probe senses the bed and the height uh, difference from that point to the nozzle tip. So it was set from the factory at 1.6. Um, we can go over how to change the Z offset um, if that value is not accurate. To set the Z offset, or at least make sure that it is correct, uh, we're gonna home all the axes again. And then we're gonna bring the Z to zero, or at least what it thinks zero is. We're gonna use the paper drag method to check the clearance between the nozzle tip and the bed itself. Everything is already up to operating temperature. You should be doing both your auto bed leveling probe and your Z offset at operating temps. So it has homed and it by default moves its Z up. It's at 11.6. So if you remember that Z offset was 1.6 millimeters, it normally moves up 10 millimeters for a total of 11.6. So if I move it down 10 millimeters, we should be at 1.6 off the bed. And then I'm gonna move it in 0.1s just to be safe. And I'll move it down in 0.1 increments. I'm at 1, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 
0.2, 0. So at 0, there is a lot of drag on this, uh, on this piece of paper here. If I move it up 0.1, there is almost no drag. So it's somewhere between 0.1 and 0. So I'll just leave it at the factory calibrated amount, which was the 1.6 millimeters. I'm not going to change that. Um, a piece of paper is normally about 70 microns or so if it's normal printer paper. Um, so given the fact that this has some thickness, this is probably actually at true zero. Um, and if you ever change a nozzle, you may have to redo that Z offset because that nozzle, the threads could be marginally uh, longer or the amount that you tighten it could be different, which would slightly change the height of that nozzle tip. Um, and that goes for both nozzles. Uh, usually the secondary nozzle is a little bit higher than the first one to make sure that it doesn't hit the print while you're printing. So since everything's heated up, we're gonna load the filament. Uh, to do so, I'm gonna spin this guy around and we'll take a look at the back. All right, so I have some of our value blue PLA here. It's 1.75 millimeter. And the one tool that they don't give you is these little flush cutters. These are kind of nice to cut this on like a 45 to make feeding this through a little bit easier. If you're looking at the back of the printer, on the right, this would be nozzle one and nozzle two. And you see this little piece of Bowden tube here or PTFE tubing, and you may have noticed it going to the hot end and it's a little bit confusing. It's not a Bowden printer, it's not being fed through the Bowden tube to the hot end. On the hot end, there's a stepper motor for each of the, the uh, nozzles, and there's a gear there that is pulling the filament through. So the PTFE in this case is really just to guide this and kind of constrain the filament path so it's not flopping all over the place. Um, I find it's easiest to have them feed kind of upwards, so in the direction of the tube. and I've already cut it on a 45, so that should make getting it into the hot end pretty easy. So you won't be able to see it from that angle, but as you feed it up, you can actually see the filament enter the Bowden tube and go towards the hot end. There it is. There's really not a lot of clearance in here, so. And you would want that to be like that. There. And then you can close this. And you could do the same thing with this one, except the Bowden tube comes from the side here. These are the two ducts where you could actually um, duct for air coming in and out. Um, and that would go uh, through the um, heater element at the bottom. There's like a radiator kind of down there. Um, as you saw earlier, we don't have that currently turned on we would just be test printing PLA. There's no reason for us to, to duct this. Um, but if we were doing ABS or something, maybe we would. That's about all there is to see at the back of the unit. We obviously have the power cord here. Um, we'll turn it around. We'll look at the Bowden tube that is leading up to the hot end and we'll make sure that the filament is extruding correctly. So hopefully you can see it here. The blue is coming through the Bowden tube there. Um, and now I'm at the hot end, it doesn't move anymore. Um, we have to release the tension on this lever here. If I move this a little bit there. We could actually remove this bolt entirely, remove the spring and lift this lever. And in, uh, you can't see it at all from there. But underneath there, if you stuck your head in, you'd be able to see the filament going through the drive gear. And there's a idler on this lever that pushes it against the drive gear. So that's why we release the tension on this on this lever so that, that that idler is not pressing the filament against the drive gear. And uh, I should be, since this is obviously very loose, I should be able to just push this gently through the hot end there. And then with any luck, it'll be oozing out the bottom of the, uh, of the nozzle. And now that I know that it's going through, I'm just gonna tighten that set screw and put pressure against that lever. And now we should be ready to print with nozzle one. So some of the specs about this machine, it has a 400 by 300 by 300 millimeter build volume. It's obviously got the two nozzles. Um, it lists a layer resolution of 0 0.02 millimeters, so 20 micron. I myself haven't gone that low, I've done 50. The filament diameter, as I mentioned, is 1.75. 
In the x and y directions, there's a positioning precision of 12.7 microns, and in the z, there's a 1.25 micron precision. In the z, to help that, we have the ABL, which is a genuine BL touch ABL that will do a mesh probe of the bed and do auto bed leveling. Uh, it uses a max power of 300 watts and can achieve speeds of up to 180 millimeters a second for printing speed, with the best speed being listed at about 60 millimeters a second. And it is very high temperature, as I mentioned, with those high temp nozzles. It can go to 420 degrees Celsius with a max bed temperature of 100 C and a max cabinet temperature or ambient temperature in the enclosure of 70 degrees Celsius. There are two extruders, one for each of the nozzles, obviously. Um, they're both direct drive, even though they use a Bowden tube to feed the filament to them. And the stepper motors for those are both 1.8 degree stepper motors and all their stepper motors are using 16 micro steps. The screen on the front is a 4.3 inch touchscreen and it's using an AT Mega 2560, so a standard kind of Arduino board to control the motion systems. It's a very heavy item, as I mentioned early on. The printer itself is 43 kilograms with a full shipping weight in the crate of 58 kilograms. So that is the CreateBot F430. For all of your high temperature engineering materials, such as Peak, Altem, and all your standard materials, polycarbonates, PLA, ABS, uh, nylons, etc. Um, hopefully you found that useful. Remember to like and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we upload more videos like that about the F430. And remember to leave a comment down below and let us know if you have any questions or you'd like to know more about the F430 or any of the other printers or items you've seen on our channel. Thanks for watching.